Lenovo. Good topic, yeah. Launches repairable laptops. This is really exciting. Lenovo is partnering with iFixit. Can I fix it? All these brands Can partnering I fix with iFixit. Can I win harder? Like, I don't, yeah. I don't get it. This is crazy. They're good partnering with iFixit on a series of ThinkPad business laptops with user replaceable parts. Owners of the T14 Gen 5 and T16 Gen 3 will be able to independently swap out the battery, RAM, SSD, and Wi Fi module. Actually, that's not really as exciting as I thought it might be. Um, our notes. That is not more. <laughs> that's. Than used to be default. <laughs> um. Oh, okay. Well, this is less Mm. of a threat to framework than I sort of thought it might be. Mm. Uh, The CPU is still soldered, although I would have assumed that that, that's, uh, they just just come in BGA packages these days. Um, Are we sure that's it? Is that a miss? They will come with easily accessible repair guides and videos, though. That's good. Mm. iFixit gave the new laptops a repairability score of 9.3 out of 10. So... Investment disclosure, framework appears to be safe for now, since Lenovo is not talking about upgradability, and that's a big part of... I don't have any investment in framework. They have a massive value add over this. It's not even close. However, I'm willing to bet these ThinkPads are more price competitive than framework, because they know that at most you will be fixing it, not using, you know, lower margin, uh, lower cost parts to upgrade it um so you'll have to you'll have to rebuy a laptop if you actually want a faster one so this is cool and i'm really glad to see that this conversation is not going anywhere but so far none of the tier ones have seen what framework is doing and gone i can do that and i would like them to uh i been part of the goal the whole time yeah i uh I have no intention to sell my framework shares. They're only they're only profitable if I ever sell them. Um, so for me, it's just an investment into this movement. I want to see it be a success, and uh, it, I'm really I'm really glad. Ultimately, I think what I was trying to do has borne out better than I could have expected. Yeah, you've been uh, well. I I don't want to attribute too much to you, but I think framework's existence and its success has inspired at least some amount of change especially in the laptop industry but we're seeing it spill out to other ones as well and i think that for better or for worse the discourse around me and framework whether it's people complaining about you know the ethics of it or or people whatever just the 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 association i think has been good for the framework brand yeah um and so that goal that i had of putting my money into it and saying no really i believe in this enough to do this um, uh, i think it's had an impact kind of ironically i think whenever whenever you do the uh like warning i am an investor in this thing people are going to look into it it like gives it more exposure it's almost like more helpful that you have to tell people every time you talk about a laptop, <laughs> it, it like totally works out because I be the main goal. You. Sometimes I forget because yeah. it just, it makes no difference D- to me. Yeah. 100%. Um, I'm going to use it. The main reason I daily drive it is not because it's my favorite laptop. The main reason that I daily drive it is because I want to force myself to be a user so that I can, Good feedback. Give them feedback anytime I run into a problem, yeah. uh, so that I, I can make a difference. Like that's that's the re- that's the reason I'm doing it. Um, there, there's multiple laptops that I like better than it. I'm a huge fan of the ASUS uh, ROG uh, Flow X13, for example. We're we're looking at that thing's awesome standardization updates for systems here, and a big conversation is like how many people are going to be, how many people are we going to move to laptops, effectively? Oh, like and not even have desktops anymore? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Tell me more. Yeah, and in that conversation, because there's been like a cost-benefit discussion, uh, one of them is that a lot of people that have desktops tend on uh, eventually ending up with both. So if they're going to have both, they might as well just have a laptop and a solid dock. Uh, Then we're not paying for like two licenses of... Things Everything. like our, yeah, basically. So it's not just cheaper in licenses, it's cheaper in hardware, it's cheaper in a lot of different ways. It might also even literally be easier for them to just have one instead of two. Um, and then they can also have this 
uh, company secured device that they can take home if they need to work from home for being sick or whatever else sure. other reason, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's, there's a lot of arguments for it. It shouldn't be everybody, obviously. I don't want to put editors on laptops, so just be stupid. Um, but uh, uh, some, some people. And in that conversation, it's like, okay, what do we go with? Because we basically just want to have one. Because this only really fits the use case of the like low-end desktop user who basically just needs a browser or that type of stuff. Because if the second you need like a GPU, well, I don't really want you on a laptop anyways. So it, it only really fits one type of user. So we probably only need one type of laptop. So what don't, one do we go with? Framework keeps working its way into the conversation and then working its way back out because they're pricey. Yeah. Cost matters, right? Especially when we're buying like a bunch of them and we need to have some in reserve. That's pretty costly. But then we do still care about things like repairability. We do still care about total cost of ownership. Yes. So sometimes it kind of works its way back in. And it's, it's like, like right, oh. but what if all that was broken was a stupid, you know, fingerprint sensor or whatever the case may be? And you know what? There's a lot of really repairable laptops from guys like HP. Yeah. From guys like Lenovo. Yeah. But will they maintain stock? Yeah. Of all those little replacement Bits and bobs, I don't know. It does, I will, to throw Lenovo uh, a bone here, it, it does help. They're partnered with iFixit. That makes me believe they will a little bit more. Um, yep. the, the, the partner with iFixit, every time that happens, my, like, how much I believe in this thing that they're doing does go up. I hope iFixit doesn't sell out. Me too, because right now they have an amazing name to throw on a project. Yep. iFixit is awesome. So I, like, I immediately trust someone yeah. more when they're partnered with iFixit. Me it's, too. It's 100%. Which is a hard true. thing to earn. And easy to lose. Very easy thing to lose. So hopefully they keep holding on to it. I believe they will, um, but you never know. Someone's going to retire at some point. Uh, leadership will roll over. Crystal D Fier eighty eight asks, "Wouldn't Framework just supply laptops for LTT and Floatplane?" Oh wow! So let me let me put it this way: <clears throat> as a shareholder of Framework, wouldn't want them to do. Would that. I want them to do that? No. <laughs> just give away laptops? If I found out that that was a thing that they were going to do, I'd be like, "Who else are you guys giving laptops to? Are you guys crazy? We're not you, even asking them. You, you're you're back ordered for four months. Yeah, ship your laptops to your customers, you mad lads. For real. Yeah." Like, if, if that was a move that was going to be done, it would be for effectively marketing and advertising. And they're, they're, and they buying, better be, they're buying on shipments, so it's, it's not a problem. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, please no. <laughs> yeah. Then we've got other things to work on. Also, we've got like 100 people, so we thought, yeah, it'd be like at well, least... Well, it's not going to everybody, though. Oh, that, that's true, that's true. So some people will still end up having desktops and laptops. Right. Some people will end up doing The writers device. will need them. Writers are probably going to need them. Yeah. Writers are probably still going to need desktops. Yep. It is what it is. But like me, for example, I could just have a laptop. Would you go 13 or 16 if you were getting a framework? 16. Do you need a GPU? Oh, is that the difference? I don't... It had, the 16 has a GPU. I don't need a GPU, to be honest. Oh. But you would just want the bigger screen? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, man. See, that's the thing is framework doesn't have a broad enough product uh, portfolio because I would tell you, you, well, you should just get something with a bigger screen that's a thinner device because you don't, if you don't need the power, then you don't need all that bulk. You don't need all that weight. It has a really good cooling system in it. Did you need that? No. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. Yeah. You, should, you should use that folding one that I had for a little bit. That thing's so cool. Yeah, the, that one is pretty cool. The review is finally coming but soon. The lab's part of this it. whole thing, like, yeah, like I could maybe have something different, but part of the whole thing is in general standardization. So this guy. I could have something different again yeah. because, you know, I'm in charge. What a guy. But Fine, in I'm going to have something too. To I'm going to have something different too. I'm going to have this laptop. Of course. Yeah, get <laughs> I'm going to have it sure. right now. Sure. No, I don't, I'd, I'd rather have help hosting the show. Actually, wait. No, okay. I'm good. <laughs> Just, I have a GPU. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, like we're, we're trying to pick what, oh no. That, oh, did I unplug something? Oh no, I think so. Cool. What has happened? Like it know. just shut down. Yeah. Nice. That's uh sweet. I'm helpful like that. I I'm fast. Yeah. <laughs> quick fingers. There you go. Um, you should see how quick I am with my whole fist though. <laughs> <laughs> what? what? <laughs> I th I think Luke missed it. <laughs> oh. I don't think he saw. Really? Oh. That's, oh, that's even better. That's pretty funny. You'll have to watch the vod. <laughs> I uh, yeah I know I have no idea. Oh yeah. boy, don't worry about it. I hope you allow that type of thing on Floatplane. We definitely do. I don't even know what it was, but yeah, yeah we've uh, we've we've debated internally many times 
you know, what would be our limits for content on float plan? I think Luke and I are both pretty, uh, if it's legal, it's, uh, it's allowed on float plan, but we've never really had anyone approach us being like, you know, I want to do only fans, but I don't want to go on only fans. I, I don't we have really. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, okay. And yep. it just came down to why I, oh, I think the platform features were pretty limited back in the day. Yes. I don't they think wanted, we even support DMs. They wanted like, to upload pictures and we only at that time supported videos. Oh, that's funny. And I was like, well, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, <laughs> only videos. And they yeah. were like, nah, I'm like, okay. Someone's like, don't do that guys. Sounds how good. about this? How about just, how don't, about just don't, don't subscribe look at it. to it. That's, that's the thing. That's, <laughs> that's the reason why we kind of think this way is you would literally have to be actively giving them money in order to see their content. So if you don't want to see their content, don't actively give them money. Now, we are partnered with Stripe and uh, effectively PayPal through Braintree. So they exert a significant portion of control, which is very interesting to me and very interesting that so many people are cool with this, but Let's they exert actually a lot of control. Um, so it wouldn't be exactly the same as something like an OnlyFans because if we have nudity on the platform, mm. it has to fall under the artistic license. Assuming anyone ever noticed anyway. Yeah, because they'd have to pay to see it and we're a pretty small platform. But um, so that's why for a long time there, I don't think it's this popular anymore because people just yeeted over to OnlyFans and then just went full ham. But <laughs> for a long time there, there was a Not ton of- Not just ham. There was- <laughs> There was a ton of <laughs> lots of art- other <laughs> There was a ton of artistic nudity on Patreon. A lot of people were right. doing cosplays while nude. So why do you think that's happening? It's because it fit under the terms and conditions that Patreon had because Patreon was partnered with whoever at the time, right? A striper or payment or whoever it was. Yeah, yep. it was it was the payment processor that was running through Patreon at the time, and then OnlyFans came out and everyone dropped the yeah, like pork. Everyone dropped the and like clams. <laughs> Everyone dropped the charade and just started going fully for it because they, they were only doing the artistic part to fit under that license. But that's what we would have as well as it would have and to be longer artistic. pork. <laughs> I had I had to have a conversation Sardines? around that time that I had that conversation with that person. I had to have a conversation with my development team at the time. It'd be like, like if one of these things has a transcoding failure. Oh, I see. Yeah. I was like, are you guys cool with this? And I like advise people at the time. I was like, you should like talk to your partner. Right. Right. Yeah. So I was like, don't tell me right now. Right. Yeah. Like go think about it and come back. And yeah. everyone was like, yeah, it's fine. Don't think it's going to happen that often anyways. And yeah. like then it ended up never happening at all. Yeah. Okay. So Handy. It didn't matter. Yeah. Anchovies. though. <laughs> I'm I'm not sure what that's a euphemism for. Yeah, that's a difficult one. Yeah. You're just very small. <laughs> yep. Small, pointy. Wait. Plentiful? 